You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good afternoon. Welcome to Fishing the DMV. I'm Jared Mounts. And I'm Thomas Ahrens. So we got a really cool episode. We got two uh, big time winners from this past this past <laughs> year. Um, they've already had two contracts possibly signed, celebrity deals, shoe deals. Yeah. Uh, Jared, you want to bring them in? Yeah. So uh, Shandoah Valley Bass Association uh, founded, I believe, uh, 1989. Eddie Sager mm-hmm. uh, passed away here in this past year, um, but he's uh, started this club. So we're 24 going on 25 years old in in the shando valley bass we have not fished it that long but uh there's been many uh locals here that have fished it um and it's a 10 10 date 10 circuit uh fishing club local club uh 40 40 have signed up for this year uh had 32 boats here recently at lake anna and so uh before we get into that though um both these guys have been loyal Jake's bait and tackle uh, customers uh, over the years, uh, for many years. And so, uh, uh, if you guys just want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and your uh, experience in fishing, or, or where you enjoy fishing and and what you enjoy doing, I'll respect my elders. You can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Ray, I'm Ray Myers, and I've been local since I was seven. I started fishing the Shenandoah River probably when I was eight or nine with my stepdad and my mom and my brothers. So I fished the Shenandoah River, what, 50 some years. What part of the Shenandoah? We fished at the Low Water Bridge and we fished at 50 Bridge. Wow. But back then, you could go down there and spend the night on 50 bridge hmm. underneath and up the river are you kidding me and we used to camp oh wow there and fish all night long until we got tired then we would sleep go to, go to sleep there but yeah you used to be able to do that stuff but now you can't do it and it's something. all sold out and got poster signs but yeah i started fishing the shenandoah and i love fishing the shenandoah Ray's going to be about 70, 70 this year. I'm going to be a big 7 coming up big here. Big 7 in, uh, in August. So that's a long time ago. That's been a long time for me, but I enjoy uh, every minute of it. Well, I mean, Rick Clun's been doing it. He's like, oh, how old is Rick Clun? 120? And oh, he's doing yeah. it. So you still have time to make the Elite hey, Series, is, is our yeah, point. If you I'm going to fish with it. Rick Clun. Are you? He's, he's my number <laughs> he one. He invited Hank Parker, Him and, Hank, too, Park, and, Hank, Him Parker. and Hank Parker are my, uh, yeah. my okays. <laughs> that's right. But yeah, that, that's basically what I've done. I fished the Shenandoah. Of course, I fished West Virginia up on the Greenbrier River for trout and all mm-hmm. that. So I've had a, I fished a little bit everywhere. I fished up in the Giuliani. We went up there. Uh, yeah, Susquehanna uh, River. Susquehanna yeah. River off Susky. We've done that. So, yeah, I, and I've been with the club. This is my eighth eighth or ninth year. I'm not real sure, but I know it's up there. The thing about like like about Ray, too, though, he just he enjoys every time he goes out. Oh, so I love fishing. So whether you catch fish or not, he's, he enjoys it. And any size fish, it, he's you, you're yeah. truly passionate about it, and you really enjoy, enjoy now, fishing. I like all the guys that fish i mean i i, I love going to, i love to talk uh i do a lot of talking but uh, and we love giving ray a hard time too they like give me he's a hard fun time. to pick on it's it, yeah they like to pick on me but it's fun it really is so how'd you get stuck with this guy here uh <laughs> actually i was working here at jake's and doing boat repair for them okay and he brought his boat in to get it worked on and i told him i said man you know i'm fishing the chick this weekend he said, yeah, I like to feast at Chick. I think that's the way it went, Randy. And we feasted the first uh, tournament in the rain. It wow. poured rain. And from then, then I said, hey, what about a partnership? And, and <laughs> so we've been feasting, yeah. <laughs> and he puts up with me, and, of course, I put up with him. But yeah, we have a good time, though. It's more of the first one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's basically about it. That's how I met Randy well, we, from here, from now, James. How, how many years have you guys been fishing together now? This is, second this is our second, second year. year. No. Yeah, this is I mean, our second. I've been most fishing club. relationships don't last that long. No, <laughs> no we get along good. We we both long. fish. <laughs> we both fish close together. I mean, mm-hmm. as far as how we style and technique, mm-hmm. style and technique, mm-hmm. and that means a lot. Yeah. So, Randy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Randy Ferris. I'm a 
local residential contractor. Been doing it for over 45 years. Wow. Been fishing pretty much ever since I was in diapers. Uh, <laughs> my father was a uh, interim manager for Montgomery Ward. So anytime they would open a store, he would be there for a year to get them established. So we've been everywhere from Maine to Florida. So pretty wow. well fished the gamut. Uh, raised with a fly rod, so it doesn't make a difference to me if it's a four inch brookie or saltwater fishing for a 800 pound blue marlin. Wow. I mean, anything in between, it's it's <laughs> just as much as a hype catching that little four inch mm -hmm. native brookie mm -hmm. as it is catching the black marlin. So it's just anytime you have the opportunity to fish. Uh, and about uh, well, 20 years ago, uh, had a friend had a boat for sale, and he was actually a contractor working for me. So went by to, to pay him on Friday because we were headed to town and he had this beautiful boat sitting in the backyard. My wife says, he's got a boat for sale. You want to take a look at it? I looked at the cover and I thought, uh, that's probably going to be a little out of my budget. <laughs> but, uh, went over, he took the cover over, looked at it. And I just fell in love right then and there and come back to my wife. I said, that's, that's more money than I want to pay for a boat. And, uh, just as true as I'm sitting here, she said, you need to buy a boat. You've taken care of me and the kids. You've got mm. them through college. You provided us with a house and a roof and a good a good lifestyle and a solid living. Uh, it's time for you. So bought a boat. I got into bass fishing, and that was a bad habit to get <laughs> going. So, Not for the good for her. Yeah. Man. She's a good woman. <laughs> yeah. That's great. You're right. That yeah. is. That's a good I've been story. a true loyal customer to Jake's Bacon Tackle <laughs> yeah. for many years. Uh, they've got a lot of my money. That's right. <laughs> My wife said, if I keep spending, we're going to have to pull a second mortgage. But. That's fine. <laughs> you, you know, that's but, one of the things, too, that, like, that, that, that mm -hmm. I absolutely love keep about talking. this bait and tackle shop is the relationships that have been built, you know. And I think, honestly, Ray, that's that's where I first met you, too. Um, and then, same thing, Randy, you know, yeah. and you guys have been coming in for a long time. But just, not just our relationship, but just seeing the relationships that you guys the connections that you build. Mm -hmm. And I think the club too, that's kind of what it's about also is just that the idea of the relationships that you build and the information you get from each other. And it's, it's a circle. It's kind of a fraternity, if you will. Yeah. Um, and so now you said, and that's, I've heard you talk also about the saltwater offshore fishing. Yeah. You're, you're big into that as well. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I love the offshore. I love inshore. Uh, uh, it's a hoot. You hook into an 800 pound black marlin <laughs> it's 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 a hoot mm -hmm. you know you fit, fight a fish for two and a half hours and then at the end of the day you're sitting there going why do i do this <laughs> but it's it's just like they say the 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 tug's the drug i mean you know mm -hmm. if, if you're into fishing you're into fishing yeah. i mean it's like alcoholic to an alcoholic yeah yeah. Uh, what, what's the biggest thing you've caught saltwater wise? What's the, uh, 823 pound black marlin. Wow. Good lord. How long did that take to get in? About two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. I can't imagine what his no. arms were like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the last time we went out, I chartered a boat by myself. It was the captain, first mate, myself. And it was a choppy day. I mean, really choppy. And uh, actually, the, the back of the boat, the cockpit got swamped three times. So we were soaking wet. <laughs> And the captain looked down at me and he said, Randy, he says, uh, look around, what do you see? I said, well, uh, I see a lot of blue water and a lot of breakers. He said, do you see any other boats? I said, well, no. He said, that's because the rest of them are smart enough to go in. <laughs> I said, well, we're catching fish. He says, you want to keep fishing? You keep driving, I'll keep catching. We brought in 834 pounds of black tuna that day. Wow. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, he showed me the picture. Yeah, 834 pounds. That's insane. Yeah. It was unreal. Yeah. How far out were you guys going for that? We were 45 miles out. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. were, we were way out in the Gulf Stream. That's a hard no. I could not yeah. do that. Yeah. That's well. Yeah, man. Yeah. The other thing well, I realized about doing this, too, is like how many like guys – it's not just one species of fish. Oh, like yeah. there's everybody kind of, it doesn't really matter. Anything yeah. that's going to eat, you're willing to catch it. So yeah. Ray, that your phone rang there. Is that your agent calling? Yeah. Yeah. If you need to take that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, phone don't, rang yeah. don't, don't let us, uh, it's getting that apparel you. deal. Yeah. They want me to have signing autographs. <laughs> now what's the biggest thing you've ever pulled in? Me? Mm-hmm. Uh, see. Oh, the He's biggest one biggins. I pulled in so far is the one on Anna this past week was, I have well, hooked you had some a nice pond one though. How big was that pond? The pond was seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. But that was a pond. That's well, still, that's still oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. seven and a quarter. Okay. I've caught five and three quarters, six pounders on Anna. 
he's hooked a big one on not on Anna but on the chick. And the ones I caught on Anna this past week was really nice. But uh, yeah, I've caught seven quarters of my biggest. That's still a freaking toad for this. And that yeah. was the first cast. And you, I caught that. He's big got one. a picture to prove it. I don't know if he caught it though. No, or I not. did. So I, I did. Just, I got uh, a picture to prove it. My, <laughs> grandson, our... my I took my grandson and he took the picture. Did he it? didn't believe it when I pulled See, it. See, we have, out. A, have a hard time believing Ray sometimes. And I know he doesn't believe me. The funny thing about us too is Ray yeah. will ask me a question and I'll be honest with him mm -hmm. straight up honest but he, he always thinks i'm lying to him so it doesn't matter what i tell him i can be honest i don't believe him so <laughs> <laughs> so then going to this you want to get in this lake ann tournament or yeah gonna... so the first tournament uh what last last, last saturday, saturday. Yeah. and uh we go down to lake anna and 32 boats 32 entered that, boats. that tournament so had a good turnout mm -hmm. um going out of sturgeon's creek Thursday. marina and so you guys go ahead and Tell us a little bit about, do you have a game plan going in or what? Uh... Yeah, like what, what happened, like, because this is the thing I think it's really cool about team versus by yourself is if you're by yourself, you're just in a room with drinking some whiskey alone stewing. But when you have a, a teammate, you know, there's some banter. You know, I fished with my brother for 10 years and half the time we wanted to kill each other before a tournament, figuring out what to do. Like, did you guys, like, do you guys have a game plan already set? Do you guys argue a lot before a tournament about what nah, to we, do? Or? I don't, I don't, I don't like to argue. There's no need to argue over fishing. You just go out and do it and have fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had a game, a game plan. We was going to hit the Sturgis Creek at the mouth, and we did. And but we come on around the corner and started fishing. And then Randy, you can take it from there because that's where you, that's where you got into them. I couldn't get a bite. I couldn't even buy one. No, we were we were we probably weren't. Had lines in the water for five minutes and already had two fish boated. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we thought, okay, we, we we're kinda, on to you it. You know, you do the thing, you, you're you looking at the sky, you're looking at the temperature, you're looking at the water, yep. you're checking the water depth, you're checking the water bottom, you're you're checking, you know, what structure, if there was, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of structure, no structure. So you're kind of doing the whole gamut. So then we kind of fixated on what we caught, mm -hmm. how we caught it, mm -hmm. the situation we caught them in, tried to mimic that. And it was just uh, it was we fun. didn't we didn't have another bite till twelve thirty. Yeah. I mean we fished wow. hard, and, and we, I, you know you start off with what you got. But we so you're hit, saying what? two fish in the first five minutes, yeah, nothing again, nothing. Doing. So how much weight do you have for those two? Like seventeen point well, two. The first two. Oh, the first the first two. two. Oh no, they, first two. they were dinks. We might okay. have had. Two and three quarters with both of them. Got it. They yeah. were small. Got they it. were so, small. Yeah. You didn't stick your big one first and like no. to calm you down. You no. didn't have enough to make a fish no. sandwich. Now, did no. you pre did you pre fish or pre practice anything when you go into this? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, what what happened then? What were the decisions that you guys started to make? Well, we hit what three more spots. Yeah. Uh, and didn't couldn't get on nothing. And I was mm -hmm. looking on my screen and all and couldn't find anything. And then I told Randy, this was what, about 12 o'clock? I said, I got a couple more places we'll hit. And we went into Pigeon. How much up to this point, too? How many times are you switching out? Like, uh, uh, how many different bear? You throwing a lot the kitchen sink at them? Like everybody? We, everything is? but the bear hook. Yeah, <laughs> everything but the bear hook. I'm serious. I mean, we. And a quarter stick. Yeah. I didn't have that. Yeah. But I wish we would have. But we hit <laughs> Pigeon and we fished the right side which is where all the little flat is in the drop off. Mm. I couldn't buy a bike. We couldn't buy a bike. That's crazy. So we changed up and went across the other way. Have you had lunch yet? No. Well, yeah, when, I got, when I got, when I got on the question is he told me, he said, After I ate a sandwich. Butter and jelly, I had a peanut butter said, and jelly. Strawberry or grape. <laughs> he yeah. still had peanut butter and jelly on his fingers. <laughs> Rod in one hand and the yeah, hook the just glad it didn't blow out of the boat. <laughs> yeah, but when I we went on the other side, I could I could see him on the screen, and uh, I I thought I was hung up on the first one. <laughs> There's the best one. I told Randy, didn't I? I said I, I I'm hung up. Randy said, uh, No, I don't I think so. Don't Your think line's so, taking off. The, the line's going toward the middle of the lake. <laughs> 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 so then. You know, we got that in, and he How told me. How much was that one? That there was the big, uh, that what, was five, a smaller one, yeah. five something. Yeah. And then, uh, can you say what you caught it on? Are you going to say? You don't oh, have to in saying that too. Like, is it a but, prototype? Yeah, this here is uh Gary Yamamoto's, but 
it was the green with the black. Oh, okay. This is all green. This is good for the river. And that's the five inch hula grub. That's a five inch hula grub. Of course, I rig it. When I rig it, I have a little slider, 16 ounce slider bullet okay. weight. And that's that's right there is how I throw it. Now, are you throwing this on your signature series rod or what? what what's the tackle? No, I'm just throwing it using? on old open bale. Open bale? Yeah, because it's real light. Okay. So I just flip it in there and let it sink to the bottom. So why the bullet weight, right? Bullet weight. Well, when you throw that bullet weight out, I mean, it don't stay. I don't peg it. And I want it to drop. And then I want this just to flutter down mm. slow. And that's most time they either hit it on the on the fall okay or they'll pick it right up off the bottom but most time it's on the fall hmm. and i'm a i'm a firm believer in this and right here i gotta say i mean that's when he was talking about that that hula grub i remember being 14 15 16 yes, years sir. old on the river throwing the hula grub and pretty much the same way but there's something about the kick of the tail it's the way the that thing just flutters the five mm -hmm. inch the yeah. the plastic too the thing about that hula grub when they pick it up they don't spit they it don't, out. They don't They're spit gonna, it like out. You were saying, they literally will swim they off take with her. it. They take her good. And and to that point, too, like that, if, I mean, it's, they were talking earlier, too, about, you know, scent, not yeah. so much to track them, but when they bite onto it or the softness of it or something yeah, in that salt or something that, because if you didn't, if it didn't, it, it would have spit it. You they spit it right out. fish on. Yeah. They, they pick it up and they just take off. But I told Randy, I said, my God, I'm hung up and I, and I go weedless. I said, I ain't no way I'm hung up. <laughs> he said, no, there goes your life. <laughs> so I wasn't hung up. But we got that in the end. And uh, heck, it wasn't, I don't know, what, five minutes or more? So now you got three in the box, right? You got three in the box now. And got then are you in the, the same spot yeah. when you guys get your fourth? Same okay. spot. We, we weren't 20 feet away from the We won 20. Wow, we man. didn't move 20 feet. Okay. And i hit another one i said randy get the net he said oh no he grabbed his he set one one too mm. but, is that right yeah no. he had to lip mine because he said my net was too small <laughs> yeah it was 6 11 i think the next <laughs> one was oh, yeah that is a stud. he said fish on so i get the net i'm looking at the net and i'm looking at the fish when she broke water i said ray we got a problem <laughs> What's that? Yeah, we got a problem you got more fish than i got net in my hand so i had to reach down and lip her in because she, my there's no way she'd have gotten the net oh, it wouldn't have never come in the net so he had to lip it and bring it up but we had uh we had uh our five right then same uh was it like a kind of a do nothing technique or just, was it yeah just, just do nothing on the long the bottom Throw her out and, and and what happens i just ease it and then i felt it heavy mm. and most of the ones we had as soon as it hit the water if you count the two fish she was, was they were picking her up they now were, were you guys it was beating almost the, an instant hit were you guys huh. beating the bank or were you guys really off uh, we, offshore no we, we was we was pretty we're close fishing the drops okay we fishing fishing drops. drops okay we was close but yeah. it was pretty deep yeah. there's one thing i didn't tell ray on the second fish which was the bigger one when i checked her uh after i put her in the box she spit up about a four inch shad <laughs> so i picked it up and i threw it out and i'm going she didn't tell me i'm that. not gonna tell her hey. <laughs> wouldn't we tell me in, that's my part lost big fish by two ounces, two ounces. Oh, <laughs> and he goodness. threw that away that would have gave us the two ounces yeah but it, was, it wasn't in her belly <laughs> ray would have been shoving it back down yeah <laughs> I'd have been put yeah. But we lost big fish. I think it was two mm. or three ounces. Yeah. They're getting big fish too on that. Yeah, that, that one would have got us one. Yeah, then, then we fished that, and it was getting what? About one o'clock, one thirty. So we headed back down, and we hit Sturgis again, Sturgis Creek again, and then we locked into another one that we called. So we ended up with five decent ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we had a blast. And the wind also, was getting bad. Yeah, it did wind really <sighs> picked up. But you kind of talked about slowing down too. I mean, that's one thing is kind of yeah. I think worked for you. We fished slow and we fished slow and then we we feast even slower. Yeah. And that's we hard let, to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. we're, I think our habitually yeah. we want to fish yeah. fast and we like to power fish and fish fast. Mm -hmm. and, but when that reaction bite's not on, not saying that others didn't catch them on on a reaction bite, but sometimes you have to slow it down. And that's even crazy too with Lake Anna, because like we know like the blueback and the shad. Yeah. And you think about throwing jerk baits mm -hmm. and swim baits or umbrella rigs, but yeah. the, but going through there and you just like just absolutely combing that water, you know, that's still effective too. That's what yeah. we did. We threw an umbrella rig, we threw a jerk bait, and a couple of other things. I mean, we threw the the things you think would work, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This this you year know, we, we hit one on that night there. So so now 
you get back in you get you get everything thrown in the sack did you guys think you had it one no. after you had five like what, what well, was your mind at going in we was thinking about we we had around 15 because my scale was off a little bit but we didn't yeah i, I, I thought we might be in the money we might be in the money third place, place. But when, did you, when, did, when did it start clicking in there i was like oh oh boy i didn't even pay well me. we were we were near the the back of the way in yeah so we saw a lot of the ones being weighed in on the right i said Hey, we might have a shot. We might have a shot because we were seeing what <laughs> yeah. was, yeah, and nobody's seen what we had. Yeah, but yeah. especially since you know Anna right now has been on fire and like oh, twenty yeah. plus pounds, twenty what twenty three, twenty four pounds. Well, see, that's what I was thinking. We were, we were, if we come in third, I was, I was yeah. going to be happy because mm -hmm. with the bags they've been pulling in. I yeah, some I mean, of the big fish term I think was what thirty some pounds. I think yeah, yeah. Were saying, and so that's there's so some big point, ones in there. You know, what's going to win it? You yeah. know, you know, but seventeen was enough enough to win it. Yeah, seventeen two. That's uh, that's probably that's my best down there. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not the greatest fisherman on Anna. I mean, I can catch them, but I can't get any of the big ones. Getting the right bites. But we just got on them that day, and they mm -hmm. and I could see them. But I, yeah, we got on. How them much do you think? Uh, I've I've been hearing a lot too, even with elite guys talking about the right place, at the right time. I mean, do you think? I mean, not to take anything away. I mean, you guys caught the fish, but I think you sometimes be there, being I at the right place, at the right time, yeah. in that feeding window. In mean, that feeding mm -hmm. window. See, after he caught the two, we didn't have nothing. It's kind of, and that's like that. You had two, you had a long break, and then long you had break. two more at noon. Like you had them like, yep. and it's almost, again, I yeah. keep thinking about those feeding windows. Yeah. And if, I you know, do. I, I he, agree. He, he, was real, he was really down. I, mean, I was, he was down, I dude, because I hadn't had a bite. Right, just keep fishing. Just keep fishing. Mm -hmm. They're in here. Yes, just keep fishing. That's a great just keep point. Fishing. Yeah. And, you know, you just, we did. you just have to be, you have to be persistent. You're exactly right. The next cast, that could be the one. That's, that's point, why I always Randy. look at the next yeah. cast, this could be the one. What was the yeah. weather patterns like like that whole week? Was that during the cold front or what? What time was that? No, two weeks it wasn't ago? too bad. The, Saturday. No, the temperatures were in the seventies. Water temps the water, what fifty four. You know, I mean, I had I had a fleece on and this I had, what a, I had. a bubble jacket yeah. on top mm -hmm. of that on the water, mm -hmm. and I was comfortable. And then mm -hmm. when I got off the water, man, I was I was shedding skin. It got hot because it, it was uh, hot. the water you know, the water temperature was strangely enough was almost consistent 54 degrees where mm -hmm. we were wow. where we was mm -hmm. just a little stained which i really liked mm -hmm. yeah anna i really liked mm -hmm. uh but it, and in the morning it was pretty calm and partly wind, cloudy i mean it was partly, partly cloudy, cloudy. So, Start you know, up a little partly cloudy clouds rolled in and you know the high pressure but as the day went on it got windier and windier but i'll be honest with you it wasn't until the wind started to pick up that's when we started <laughs> that to get on the big fish mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, that is so weird, like how the weather can play for it in the spring and how mm -hmm. different yeah. lakes react yeah. differently. Because mm -hmm. you think yeah. with weather like that, man, thirty pounds easy, mm -hmm. but yeah. then for some reason that day, and they were just not cooperating. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what besides like Anna? Where would you guys like? You guys have fished the chick, but where are some other like I, hidden gems of this area that that you think don't get fished as much? Like I know, like we've heard about the Rappahannock River being mm -hmm. on there, but like chick. Like I always think like the Chickahominy, not the mm -hmm. lake, mm -hmm. but the creek that it connects to it, because that's where the Bassmasters go. But mm -hmm. you guys are going to the to the Chick, right? The lake yeah, version. Yeah, twenty third and twenty fourth, yeah. um, <clears throat> going out of a different ramp. Uh, same one we did last year, but yeah, um, which is yeah, some guys could run up in the James, I guess, if you want. Um, that's used a to long be they run. Fish the lake or the river run. out of Rockahawk. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the ramp we're going out of now? Uh, uh, not rivers rest no, but river river side. River side, river side river side on the left side about two miles down yeah what is that's, that what is that lake fish like the chickahominy lake well the the <laughs> river i've not fished some guys i've never fished, fished the lake, lake. the river is oh, really? great because it fishes i mean i was telling somebody saturday um because our youth are going down this weekend and uh, fishing on sunday is a tournament but you literally have everything you've got pads you've got grass you've got docks you've got cypress trees oh. it's a tidal water but you've got deep water i mean it's if it's got a little bit of everything it, for you you're a lot you're gonna fall in love you will really? go back yeah yeah last year uh tell them about the first day pre-fishing we went yeah we were, we were pre <laughs> it, was, it was cold morning end of april we're coming mm -hmm. down and i'm looking at the roofs and there's frost on the roofs i'm going this oh. is not right <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah. get it it was cold we were bundled up like eskimos gloves you know Hat, all wrapped coat. up yep so we go down we find look around for a while we drop in dropped power pole started fishing third cast i had a 748 oh, <laughs> <woo>. wow. <laughs> oh yeah that is a toad yeah hey now we had some other 
course, you know, then the thing is, is okay, let's get out of here. So, you know, yep. pull the poles, you find another mm -hmm. spot. Mm -hmm. Then we got on them there. So, so let's pull the poles. So we just, <laughs> we went all over the place because every place we dropped in, three or four casts, we had a fish on. So that was mm -hmm. insane. We had a Saturday was a great day for us. We came in third on that day. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, we started off good. We start, I mean, really started off good. And then about nine o'clock, I lost all power in the boat. Everything we lost. We had to come down, off. Shut down to nothing. So we had to drop fish and get towed back. So. We had three in the live well yeah. that was yeah. real nice. Yeah. But we yeah. put them back. We didn't want <laughs> to lose them. That's fishing. That's yeah. fishing. That's, that's what happens. Yeah. So what are you guys expecting this year when you go down? What do you think the weights are going to be? What do you think is going to be hot? They're, they've been turning some good bags right now. So, you know, if the if the – continues the way it is it'll, it'll probably be pretty good mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. but the chick can be funny uh, <laughs> because there's days we've been down and pre-fished we had one friday pre-fished mm -hmm. our best five was probably 35 pounds and i as i'm sitting here swear to god 35 pounds <laughs> and the next day couldn't get eight pounds in the boat mm -hmm. so it's it tidal waters can be fickle mm -hmm. You know, they can be very fickle. Now, does the lake ever play when you guys go down there for the for Some guys fish it. I mean, there, yeah. there's definitely, I mean, there's yeah. big double-digit big, bass oh, yeah. potential yeah. in there. And so it does um, a lot of timber. And yeah. I've never, like I said, I've personally never yeah. And it does come into play. Most guys are going to be on the river. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But some guys will split. Uh, which we don't have that option now, unless you can still lock through. I don't know, but yeah. I don't know that many guys I don't guys know how are. they would work at. It used to be when you go in a rock lock, you could pick and you could go the lake or the river yeah. and sometimes used to be you can lock through but i don't know if that's going to be the case so most guys are probably on the river now speaking of yam and now ray you hmm. had big fish a couple years back down there too yeah and i was still in the grub and the hula grub doing right? the same thing flipping cyphers hmm. i lost one bigger than the five three quarter i had i lost that and i was watching snakes Watch for snakes and flip the trees. And how big was the big big one that year? Five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. Well, what was interesting about that one too is <laughs> we were we were above Ray, and he was on that bend and and he just missed. You could hear the splashing. I and missed. He just nice, missed a decent fish. Came off, jumped. And I was like, man, look at that, Brian. And uh, all of a sudden, it wasn't even. It wasn't two minutes. Ray pulls the trolling motor and he start. <laughs> he goes to the bank. I'm like, what the heck is he doing? Like, that was a decent fish. And there's probably more in there why mm -hmm. is he leaving fish right there mm -hmm. and that's when he went over and stuck that five pounder i asked him later i said ray what what made you decide that well he said you, you didn't hear the guy in the bait shop the night the day before <laughs> we were in the bait shop and i was like no he said he was telling us to watch the water line he said when that tide comes up and the water's going up the cypress trees go to the bank and he said so that's mm -hmm. what i did that's what and i did it, it paid off for him hey ed allen's guy that's what he said he said when that tide coming in, you hit them trees. I said, yes, sir. Devil in the details. It's just the little it, details. Little details. Yeah. And it I didn't make sense trees. to me, but it, it paid off for him. That decision he made at that point right there mm -hmm. did pay off. And there was, what, four, at least four boats there. And I, yeah, you were, you were back in, too. He wasn't just on the bank. He kind of went back in one of those creeks there. I and I could back, hear him yeah. and hollering. I, yeah, I hooked that big one, and I lost that other one. And all in cypress trees. I love the fun. I love the cypress. Yeah, I've never fished Cypress New York. Oh my! Before. If you yeah. ever go to the chicken fish, yeah. I guarantee you, you will go go back. Now, is that going to be the tournament on the schedule you guys are looking forward to the most? To do well in, or is there a specific tournament that you guys are like? Yeah, this that's is my one number one fishing spot. Number one as a spot. whole, that's been my, my yeah. best spot. Mm -hmm. My too. So, which term are you the most worried about then on the schedule? I'll be honest with you, Anna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Anna. Yeah, but we got that and passed yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one I was worried too. Because like I say, I only catch dinks. I never mm -hmm. really got on to the big ones in there until this one. I mean, I catch some nice dinks, but nothing like this. Mm -hmm. So I was real pleased. But I, like Randy said, I was down. I mean, come 12 o'clock, man. That could, is hard. Because I, I I still venture, I'm curious to how many casts you make in a, oh, in a day know, in a tournament. But, um, and yeah, it's, I mean, in when you're not catching your partner is catching you're not catching you're both not catching you're like you're right it's it can be discouraging it can, it can I mean, play it, on your mind you down, a little mentally. bit it really can but, but my arm was sore sunday morning but to randy's point you're exactly <laughs> right you have to keep throwing because you yeah. never know when that bite's going to come and how many times too and i heard again that, that tournament somebody rolls in uh, i think a five pounder was caught in the last you know five minutes mm -hmm. you know or whatever so you, you don't ever quit you, mm -hmm. you, you just keep and plugging and away and, and yeah. hopefully get that right bite. So that puts you guys first in the points, correct? 
Uh, yeah, since it's the first tournament. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I should I should know the schedule since I'm a part of the club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time we've been at the top. Well, and Ray, I gotta say too. I mean, you we were talking earlier too. Like you're the fact part of us being retired, I think, is is helping you also because you're he spent you're spending a lot of time. YouTube has been oh, a good friend for you. Like awesome. you're like he comes in here like every day, every other day, telling Jennifer to order new secret <laughs> bait. That's all I hear about secret bait, secret bait. But <laughs> but it's not just that so much as it is just the just watching to, different stuff, watching different mm -hmm. stuff, learning, seeing how they do it. I've mm -hmm. seen you evolve as an angler too, and just in mm -hmm. being around different anglers, you know, mm -hmm. listening to different people, um, that information and knowledge mm -hmm. out there, really paying attention to it not overthinking, but paying attention to that information and being willing to uh, think outside the box. Cause I know you can be stubborn too, which we all are. We all are. But I've seen you kind of like say literally grow and mm -hmm. change, change, you know, change. how you fish and stuff. And I think that's, you know, and again, we can learn from everybody. So you know? what was the biggest thing YouTube helped you with? Like what is something that you picked up on that's really helped you the past couple of years fishing well, wise? Well, I watched the uh, couple of YouTubes on cold weather cold weather man fishing the cold weather and like i say it showed me how to what the foe mm -hmm. best i had to really slow down because i'm one that fishes a little fast too and i really had to slow it down and basically that's what it did and it showed me how to crank it mm -hmm. i mean just things like different things like that how to throw a, a crank and what collar to pick and things mm -hmm. and it it that helps a lot but uh I, uh, a chatterbait. I never throwed cranks. I never throwed chatterbaits. I'm mm -hmm. a plastic man. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I like to throw. But now I throw cranks. I throw lipless. I throw chatter. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. What's your crankbait setup? What do you like to throw it on? And what do you like to throw? Oh, shoot. I, I'll throw quite a few different cranks. Deep divers. I even went and bought, I think, three of them this year goes down to 25 feet good lord <laughs> yeah They're, i fish them on anna mm -hmm. in the warmer weather mm -hmm. but uh yeah but uh i'll throw a chatter bait i really like to throw a chatter now uh especially through grass or around wood and they say that really works so but on the smith i throw a paddle tail we went through the smith throw paddle tail we th throw different things down there cranks and paddles yeah, that's a lot of fun. Now, Randy, you've got some experience too, like with He's extreme and different tournaments. Talk a little bit about some of the different tournament series you've been on. Well, when I first got into bass fishing, <clears throat> most of the fishing I did was always, you know, with hip riders or mm -hmm. offshore mm -hmm. or, you know, on an offshore boat. I really didn't do a lot of bass fishing per se mm -hmm. on a boat. I did get hooked up with a couple good anglers early on, mm -hmm. James Harner and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Bo Helsley. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them excellent anglers. Yes. And uh, I remember the we were on the Potomac first time with James and first tournament, first tournament I ever fished. You know, I was not a competitive fisherman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, I said, well, what do I throw? So he threw me a white on white chatterbait. He said, throw that. I said, what else do I throw? He said, you throw that. I said, <laughs> no, what if this doesn't work? He said, no, you throw that. <laughs> and caught five fish that day i go mm. man this is great so mm. the next day next tournament two weeks later i said uh so i went and got a whole bunch of chatterbaits right i'm ready i got chatterbait tied on he he go, reaches over and he snips it off he goes uh-uh this is what i want you to throw so he tied something else on. he said i said well what do i throw if this do, do i go back chatterbait he goes uh, uh you throw that all day <laughs> but what it taught me is mm. and what he taught me he says you cannot become a good angler unless you're not if you're not confident with what you're throwing gotcha. mm -hmm. you can't be good if you're not confident and he said the only way you get confident he says like with that chatterbait he said you learn to fish it different ways mm -hmm. different different locations mm -hmm. different structure different water you learn to fish it a different way mm -hmm. and you become diverse with it and he mm -hmm. said that's the way you have to be with every bait you throw he said if you're not confident with it don't fish competitively with it. Mm -hmm. So you go out and you practice with it. Mm -hmm. You take a day and just take that bait and fish it, mm -hmm. fish it only and find the different ways to do it. And that really taught me how to be diversified mm -hmm. and not become so stubborn that you have to fish a certain bait, mm -hmm. a certain place, a certain way at a certain time. Mm -hmm. Because, and with those two mm -hmm. anglers, they're probably two Dangerous. of the best anglers I've ever fished with. Mm -hmm. And I've really learned a lot just by keeping my eyes and my ears open and keeping my mouth shut. 
And learning that confidence too, because like yeah. you can't throw yeah, right. you can't throw what I'm throwing if you don't have confidence. That's right. And I can't throw yep. what you're throwing if I don't believe yep. in it too. It's and so to his point, you don't gain the confidence until you keep throwing it. And right. you don't want to get can. sometimes I get in this bad habit of I'm already thinking about the next thing and it's and mm. you change so quickly that you don't like you're saying, you don't figure out how to fish it and you don't fish it long enough to gain the yeah. confidence. Yeah. So that that's good advice. Mm -hmm. That's really good yeah. advice for everyone at home. Mm -hmm. So how many tournaments are left in the, in the Well, I think right nine, nine, nine Ooh, total. Nine total. Uh, yeah, we got, we and even 18. the chicks, the so chicks are two days, there's yeah. a spring and a fall, but those are two separate uh, So of mm -hmm. that 10. And then Smith Mountain, there's a two day eight on Smith. So there's six right there. Mm -hmm. a wrap is still on the we schedule. We got the wrap still the on in the Potomac. So, and it is a good group of guys. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that club is, it's grown over the years and, uh, just to really, they're, they're very competitive, but yet mm -hmm. they're, they're not, they all seem to be good guys. Um, and for the most part, you know, everybody's out to, uh, obviously compete, but yeah. you know, that camaraderie again and fellowship afterwards before and after, uh, I think is, you know, they're a really good group, uh, group, good club, mm -hmm. you know, to fish with. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and Ray, he took my five dollars. You know, we do little side bets here and there. We used to bet, you know, cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. I only get a hamburger, but okay, I'd get a cheeseburger out of him. You know, if I really smooth talk him, <laughs> and then I'd beat him, and then he wouldn't bet me anymore. So I'd convince him, and uh, you know, I made the mistake of I kept telling Ray, I said, "I'm dialed in, Ray. I'm dialed in." And and uh, of course, we 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 had five fish, but we brought them in in these little sandwich baggies, kind of probably what you got right there. The, <laughs> Felt like put it. your peanut butter and jelly in. They were not very big, so yeah. Ray was tickled pink to uh, that five dollars too, since Ray is very stingy. <laughs> he doesn't come off his money when i got that five dollars I, I should have framed it and hung it up because i wasn't gonna let that go but he he won that five bucks back from me so but that's that's the whole thing it's so f much fun to f fish this club mm -hmm. and to have that i mean i look forward mm -hmm. to it every month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. doing it so randy too you've got a little bit of experience up at uh lake holiday uh, you've caught some good fish up there i know the lake hot lake has changed over the years but Yes, uh, it, some of our listeners are are also able to fish up there. So yeah. anything, it, Lake Holiday. I mean, it's it. Everybody body evolves. I mean, mm -hmm. there were years back when we had a, a a large flow of salt water into the Chickahominy, and it, it mm -hmm. almost annihilated the entire mm -hmm. bass population. They had to uh, restock, mm -hmm. and now I mean they're they're catching record record bass. Wow. And so every, everybody body of water goes through its cycle phase mm -hmm. and i think lake holiday's done that too but i will say of uh, the best uh small mouth i've ever caught have been in lake holiday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there was one day fishing just on the breast of the dam and i didn't go i know 50 yards and in 15 minutes i had five smallies all better than 21 inches in the day wow. i laid the ruler down on the boat <laughs> laid the fish down and took the pictures because i said people weren't going to believe it but uh the lake, time i went with you that you picked them up right along there too shaky yeah, head and uh, you just wore them out i mean there's days i've been up there and that we can catch 60 70 fish wow. and i vouch for that too because i remember when i went with you he dropped the trolling motor i mean he dropped he's got a nice boat and uh, didn't start the big motor dropped the trolling motor and caught fish pretty much within every about 100 to 200 yards yeah. we're, he's picking up fish mm -hmm. yeah. and we only had time to make it not quite halfway around the lake yeah following the, the bank but you know and that goes to show too that i mean there's fish in there oh they're you in know there. And they'll move you yeah. may not catch them or think yeah. they're there but they're there yeah does lake holiday and lake frederick fish at all the same or are they completely different how they no, they're <laughs> they're completely different uh mm -hmm. from my experience i mean this is my experience which i'm not a real detail oriented on lake frederick but i do know there are they have had some large fly florida hybrids and mm -hmm. i mean they've they've caught some 10 11 12 pounders uh when when spawn season on that's when you fish like mm -hmm. frederick mm -hmm. uh, but uh it's it fishes different than lake holiday lake holiday i'm going to be honest with you there there have been days that you could go in there and almost throw in a bear hook and you come out with a fish mm -hmm. <laughs> uh lake frederick isn't that way it's uh it, it's very sporadic is lake that the Holl hardest lake to fish though in, it has been here? locally like, for me yeah it's been one of the hardest ones to fish yeah hmm. because it's very sporadic that's what i get from everybody mm -hmm. that like lake frederick is this weird thing where it's mm -hmm. like if they're spawning go there if not right. never mm -hmm. never touch it yeah well i think too uh you know brian's fished a good bit 
on Lake Pratt. I think it goes back to that same thing too, the time on the water. Right. Mm-hmm. And the more you're on the water, the more you'll learn, you know, what works and what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lake and I don't understand this. I'm just, a lot of my knowledge comes from people uh, here yeah. and here to talk, but, um, being able to get off the bank, kind of like you guys were talking about Anna, like we're, yeah. we can relate to that bank and mm-hmm. that log, but that lake is one that I it's think you offshore. have to get offshore. Yeah, you offshore. have to get, you got to fish the 20 to yeah. 25 foot, 30 depth and, or they might be suspended in that. They might not be on the bottom. So, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like Ray was talking about earlier too, being versatile and learning something different, mm-hmm. learning to fish something that maybe you've always fished a certain way. You have to fish it a little bit differently. Um, and at nighttime too, out there, I mean, that's a lot of the big fish out there have come at night. Um, yeah. you know, and you may see a picture of it, but it's mm-hmm. taken at six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning, but it might've been caught at, you know, <laughs> one o'clock, two yeah. o'clock yeah. in the morning. Mm-hmm. So now I'm interested when I get out there with my live scope this year, check for the blue back and stuff. Cause that's yeah. the thing we keep hearing about is just this pelagic bait that's in mm-hmm. there now. Yeah. And then it makes sense why mm-hmm. it's such a weird place. Cause yeah. yeah, they are. They're just, they're just schoolers. They yeah. just follow everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that is, that is really interesting. Now with, with like holiday though, it's been going through some swings, right? Like it's, yeah, like, it used to have a lot of vegetation. Yeah. Randy will tell you, I mean, there for a time, he's talking about smallmouth too. I, there for a time, I was thinking the state record smallmouth is going to come out of that lake. Yeah. I mean, it's that six, seven pounds and just the growth of those smallmouth. But, um, yeah, the, the hydrilla and grass carp and put too many in and no hydrilla had to draw the water down uh to fix the dam was the first thing and then the grass carp was the second thing and so we've done some stocking hopefully and the grass will will come is coming back and will come back it may still be a couple more years but Mm -hmm. you know before it gets back to what it was and maybe it won't but but i appreciate what randy said too that all all waters we were talking about this earlier with chris it's going to cycle through and there's nothing is going to be pristine and, and great all the time um and so uh you just yeah that cycle you just have to ride that that cycle mm-hmm. and take the good with the bad i think yeah. so yeah what kind of boat uh you you all were in your boat right right what kind of boat are you oh on uh, Anna? yeah i got a uh 2001 19 and a half foot pro craya which is a nice boat big enough for mm-hmm. both of us and uh it does a pretty good job and you guys are switching off so what do you yeah. run randy he's i run a 2005 triton tr21x okay beautiful she's, she's an old lady but she's been redone yeah she's, you get a mercury or a yamaha yeah, or it's what? a mercury, mercury. It's a, yeah yeah that's what mine is mercury yep optimax pro xs okay 225 yep. same here same here mm-hmm. yep ray talk a little bit you did a good bit of boat repair for us as well um did a good job of that so boat owners what are some things they should be you know thinking about as far as maintenance on their boats and and uh just different things that uh, little tips that they can they need to be looking out for or or doing well first off if you're running ethanol gas you should be putting treatment in you should Mm -hmm. put treatment in anyway Mm -hmm. on on your in your tank i put i put a tank uh, a bottle Mm -hmm. in every tank of my my boat and of course, then and you, you mainly run a non-ethanol. I I was running non-ethanol, but this last time I put eth- regular mm-hmm. fuel in, and uh, I put the treatment in. Mm-hmm. The main thing too, if you're running, if you're burning that fuel, you're, you're, you're burning it out. Okay, you're okay, okay car, but, but it, when you it set sits, them, yeah. yeah, it makes it a little mm-hmm. harder. Now, can you let gas sit in a boat? Like for people at home that don't know, uh, is that something where if you leave gas in it through the winter and you don't winterize it, should you pump the gas out of there before you run it, or would it be okay it, if it has ethanol? It, it's, if it doesn't have any treatment in it, it's going to be hard to start. And most of the time, you're going to have to pump them out or you're going to have to clean your carburetors or okay. your injectors because it's, it's, it's going to gum up on you. When you say treatment, you're talking about the Startron? Now, Startron or Seafoam. Now, Mercury has uh, uh, one that they use, but I use Startron myself because that's what I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many different ones. Lucas has one out there. STP has one out there, but everybody has their own choice Mm -hmm. you know and then every time you uh start that thing up make sure it pees real good you know everything's good there your your props good and changing the oil now a lot of them are the four strokes now Mm -hmm. oil and filter i would do that every year that's just my opinion you're Um, right ray i mean that's he worked on the jet boat a little bit and those those fuel lines, my gosh, you talking about corroded. They're I mean, bad it's inside. like the plastic mm-hmm. is a hard, it's, I mean, it's yeah. just really, it'll. Yeah. 
eat it up. Just little things like that, your your fuel uh, filter and stuff mm -hmm. and fuel and water separator, just things like that. Mm -hmm. It might cost you a little bit now, but it's going to save you down the road. Mm -hmm. No, that's good stuff. Yeah. That's real good stuff. Where can they get, where can everyone follow you on your uh, social medias? Oh. <laughs> He's got a Facebook now, I think. No, no well, yeah, I got. Yeah, William, William Myers. Yeah. All right, so yeah. guys, follow him so you can start building his audience of fans yeah. <laughs> uh, for the next tournament win that's going to be coming. Um, you can find him in here, Jake's too. Like yeah. mornings, he'll come in for the free coffee. Come in free coffee. <laughs> and, uh, he is retired. And, uh, I am retired. I'm picking already, but he's 70 years old and he's worked a long time. He's worked yeah. hard, so he deserves mm -hmm. uh, this retirement. But uh, I give him a hard time too. I always ask, do you even know what day it is, Ray? Some and days he, I some don't. Days he gets it, most days he gets it wrong. Yeah. doesn't matter to him anymore. Doesn't matter so, to uh, me. All I can tell you, if you don't fish and you do start fishing, you're going to love it. I've been fishing probably since I was seven. And I still, every time I hook one, it's great. So the tug know. is the drug. Yeah. The it's a bad, it's yep. a drug. I, it's the big question it. people have right now, are you guys going down to Smith Mountain? <laughs> they're going. I can tell. They're well, going. we we talked about it. We talked originally. We said because of the price of the fuel, fuel we didn't know. Yeah. But since we won a tournament, now we got a little extra. All right, sure to hear first. Mike, Mike, Mike and it depends it now. depends <laughs> on what we do on the chick and on the uh, on the. Ray, I'll bring it. you a couple extra peanut burn jellies. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> he did give me one on the chick because it blew out my boat, my yeah. sandwich. But yeah, he did give me that, and so. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, at least for one month, we can relish for being in first place. <laughs> yes, at least for one, well, one no, month. You guys, you guys can catch them. Yeah. And I think, uh... Well, we did good last time on the chick. Mm -hmm. I mean, we came in third. so And Angler of the Year is still a possibility. Yeah. So. And I think the big thing, with you're talking about team too, it's what, what I find is interesting is, and like you said, styles. You, got, you can have – you, you got the hybrid too. They can slow down or they right. can speed up. They yeah. can be versatile, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. Now you have those two that can't can't cross over. So yeah. they're just strictly power fishing, and that's they're going to be on that trolling motor, and they're going to be burning. They're going to be yeah. you know cranking, and that for the guy that needs to slow down mm -hmm. and soak it a little bit, maybe on a shaky head or drag a jig, you know that's where that you know mm -hmm. that partnership sometimes doesn't work if they can't you know switch over. Now mm -hmm. the guys that can fish both styles. And so if you're fishing fast and, and you can speak to this too with your brother, yeah. you know, just how it goes. Yeah. it's one thing when you did your seminar, I really picked up on how much in tune you two were in your, in the team approach, not, mm -hmm. not necessarily your individual, what you like doing or what he likes doing, but working together with each other. And that, you know, I, I see that a lot. Um, and it's just, again, it's that ability to be able to, you know, how are the, what are the, how are the fish wanting it? And, mm -hmm. and, yeah, I might want to fish fast, but maybe the fish are wanting it slow and, and yeah. we need to, you know, or how you're positioning the boat too, mm -hmm. for that matter, you know, and not and it's hard. backboating it's hard. your, your person or uh. switching <laughs> off or are you guys on the trolling motor? Like you all straight off on that or how do you does guys that fish the front deck together? Well, I'll, I'll speak for my part. Yeah, <laughs> I will, because if mm -hmm. it comes time for lunch, mm -hmm. you know, I want to sit down. I want yeah. to take a couple of minutes just yeah. to kind of get my head sure. kind of recentered, mm -hmm. and then then I'll I'll jump back up on it. Yeah. But I, I mean, last year uh, I had pinched nerve in my back. There mm -hmm. were three tournaments. Ray had one boat. I, I ran and the I had whole to sit time. in the back seat. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was hard for me mm -hmm. because I'm used to being up front. But mm -hmm. doing that, and especially like fishing with Ray, it 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 kind of teaches you that whoever you fish with, mm -hmm. there's a balance. Mm -hmm. That's know? right. And he'll he'll tell you that he likes to fish. <laughs> plastics and he mm -hmm. likes to fish slow right well sometimes if i think that they're high and fly mm -hmm. you know i want to crank <laughs> right. but the thing that has showed me to be respectful for him i mm -hmm. can still position the boat that mm -hmm. he can do what he mm -hmm. needs to mm -hmm. do but it gives me enough time to more target right. fish mm -hmm. that's right instead of just going one cast two cast three cast and then look for another spot that i i can i can pick from the front back and mm -hmm. then and that's then right. fan myself around so it's taught me to be more proficient with my high and fly mm -hmm. while he's doing low and slow. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's times that, uh, that when he fishes, you know, he'll ask me, he says, you know, am I too close? Am I too far away? So, you know, it's, it's mutual respect that I yeah, think that's yeah. why we fish so well we together. Fish so well. Yeah. Uh, and of course we're, we're, we're probably 
the two oldest guys in the group. So, you know. <laughs> How old are We're you, like Andy? Old. Uh, I'm, I'll be 60, 68 this year. Oh, wow. <laughs> so good we are all, probably. Though. Yeah. yeah but so. you hit on something interesting because I remember with, with me and my brother, one strategy we did is you have one guy just working as fast as possible, mm. one guy going methodical. It was interesting. When we went through an area like that, we never second guess coming back because we knew if we didn't you catch anything, it, yeah. we are yeah. done. Because yeah. if I'm working a jerk bait and he's dragging mm -hmm. a shaky head and mm -hmm. we didn't catch anything, it doesn't exist mm -hmm. and right. just move on. <laughs> Versus if you're trying to just power through mm -hmm. it, you know, you always know if you're power fishing, there's maybe one or two that you kind of yeah. left behind. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that when you're hitting yeah. both sides of the water column. And I'm glad you said that, Randy, because that is that's very true. That to that point, contrary to what I was saying, is you can still do both mm -hmm. in that the, he can fish slow. And then you can just, but you're now going to hit every angle. Yeah. Right. And not only you hit every angle, but you're going to come back. Cause I've, right. I keep hearing too, that 30 cast, you know, 30 cast and yeah. on tw 28th cast, you know, mm -hmm. you find, you hook up in, in the mm -hmm. same cast. Like that just seems crazy, but you can still do both. No, well, yeah. Um, yeah. but that mutual respect, yeah. what mm -hmm. you said. Well, is so it, it's caught me instead of, if you got laid down <clears> and just fishing for the target way back against yeah. the bank is to start farther to the front to give him time, start farther mm -hmm. to the front and cast farther mm -hmm. back and then move over, start to the front. And I found myself that casting to the back, a lot of times I've been missing a lot of those fish mm -hmm. that are up front. Right. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times I found out that when you're you're fishing that, that lay down or that brush, a lot of times it's the transition from where you have all the brushy brush and all of a sudden the brush ends, mm -hmm. that's where they're staged. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so a lot of times it's taught me instead of going for the deep is, is all the way in the back is to, to work my mm -hmm. way from the front to the back so mm -hmm. that I don't spook the fish in the back. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really helped me be more methodical. That's so, good. Yeah. yeah. And it's and, kind of like a basketball, you know, three point shooter when you're hot, you got the yeah. hot hand too. Like let you got to sometimes go with that. Right. And I know Brian and I too, we're, we're kind of like that where we'll, we'll compliment each other and um, you know, and it, and it does, it works both ways. Some days, you know, he's catching them and you know, I'm not, or some days very rarely are you both catching them. Sometimes you do, or you're both adding, you know, yeah. adding to the weights. Um, or I'm on and he's not, or, I mean, there's been times too, where the, the, you know, jackhammer chatterbait bite mm -hmm. and it's, it's the same, like doing the same cadence, same cadence, watching everything, same fall, everything. And he's getting bitten. I'm not, but what's interesting too, you had one of the Rogers jigs. Cause I, I told him about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had finished, I think second at Anna a couple <laughs> years ago. And I remembered and that I caught like two or three, you know, decent, they were, we didn't have a big bag, but yeah. you know, two of the three fish we caught were on that Rogers jig. Mm -hmm um the bluegill mm -hmm. color the small smaller profile but mm -hmm. what was interesting too and I, i'm the guy that says color doesn't matter uh but he had one also and tied it on wasn't getting anything when he changed up the trailer the same trailer he got bit mm -hmm. so maybe and in that mm -hmm. particular time maybe there was something to it but i, I think the point what we're trying to make here is you're a team and mm -hmm. it's not like you're a boater and a co-angler Nah. type thing you're a team and so how how can you work together mm -hmm. and use each other's you know strengths well, and be flexible be open be respectful that's how i try to do it with randy i try to position the boat when i'm operating it to where i'm not putting him in a place that he ain't gonna get any i'm mm -hmm. trying to keep it out and trying to get both of us mm -hmm. on fish uh that's just because i respect the way has he tried to throw you out yet though yeah Ray? He like, did that on Smith. Did he? he said, don't don't stick your tongue out because you might bite it off. Well, we airborne that boat that day. Did I you? come out yeah. of seat. Well, I think that, that's that a was common denominator for you, too. That's one reason I say, because I know you've been on a jet boat, too, when they took off. Floyd took off. And yeah, he, he threw me back. Threw you back on a thing. But I come out of his seat on his trike. And then you were with me one time. on the. We were on the river, a little jet, stick steer yeah. jet boat. We were coming up. Well, and, we hit a Well, rock. two different times. One time we came up. It was pretty cold that day. And we were coming up. And, I mean, it was <laughs> went down fine, came up. Everything was good. Moose sailing. And then hit this one rapid. was on kind of an angle, 45-degree angle. And we're coming up through there, and I just just missed the seam, and ran up on this rock, and, and I hear Ray in the back going, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" <laughs> and that boat, like this, I look back, oh, and it was hey, it was it close. Was ready to come in. We were teetering on the rock. <laughs> we and, was teetering on the rock. Well, I, got the worst, two, I got two handles on my boat. I got one one up by the dashboard and a handle down on the floor. I now call them Jesus handles. Everybody said, "Why right. do you call them Jesus handles?" Because I said, when I take off and we're flying. Ray's over there going, holding on, going, oh, Jesus, oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> hey, that's the truth. <laughs> oh, oh. 
<laughs> then I almost lost you on that Stokes bottom coming down. Chris, yeah. Chris of course, we were talking about, and that went over, and that back caught, and we both went. I come clean out of the seat. He threw me forward. We was mm. moving pretty good, yeah. but it happens. I haven't lost no, you yet, it does. though. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> well, we may not be the, the best fishermen in the club, but I don't think there's any two guys that love to fish any more than we do. Mm, that's cool. And the one thing about it is it's more important we get the fish than it is to win. It's nice to win. Yeah. But, but it's I'll fun to fish. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you, know, it's, you know, it's like it's been said, you know, it's a great group of guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I fish with a lot of clubs. I fish with a lot of fellas. But it's, uh, I think as far as being down to earth and guys that really love to fish more mm -hmm. than they mm -hmm. want the money, uh, this, is, this is the group you need to be mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Well, that's, group of I appreciate you guys coming on too, because mm -hmm. there is the old timers, you know, I don't think we give them enough credit sometimes. No, and, no, uh, true. you guys have been, you know, your experience, uh, your tenured, your veterans, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, you know, you, there's always something you can mm -hmm. learn and just your willingness to be able to share, you know, from your experience and stuff. We do appreciate that. And, uh, and, and one more thing before, mm -hmm. before we go is we try to ask everyone that's like, what is one fishing goal or, or dream that you guys have for this year? Is there a place that you'd like to go? Um, that's the St. Lawrence oh. river or anything else like that. You got any bucket list thing that you guys would want to do in your fishing careers? I would love to fish the Florida Keys. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That place is awesome. I would <laughs> love cool. to fish the uh, John's River down in Florida. Is that the John's? St. John's. 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 Yeah. yeah. I'd love, because Rick Klung fished it and won it there. Mm -hmm. I'd love to fish that for a week or two weeks. <laughs> yeah. St. John's is like, they I'd love to the fish that. Sacks. But the Florida Keys. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that you'd want to stick down there? Tarpon, bonefish? Fly fish for tarpon. Oh mm. my goodness! <laughs> For that, <laughs> you thought a two-hour fight with a marlin would be something. Uh -huh. That thing there, whew. yeah, I can't imagine hooking one of them on a fly. Right? <sighs> yeah, dude, I, you've watched it on TV, and yeah. it, it takes them like two to three hours to get that yep. thing in. I'm still amazed too that one thing we've been coming up aloft in is the idea too of the fish. You, mm. you think about what a fish, a fish, regardless of species, will take us all over the country, all over the world, all over like mm -hmm. what we're doing chasing after a fish yeah. you know all the, how much money we're spending and what we're no it is, it's, it's crazy it's pretty pretty amazing but like you said that tug we're talking about smallmouth earlier mm -hmm. like there's it's just like, something that never like goes alcohol, away it's just never yeah, goes the way away. i know how to explain it and whether exactly. it is and whether you're young like yeah. these kids young kids mm -hmm. you know watching them or you're old mm -hmm. i mean you know doc is another one that just he's like he he's like it. a 10 year old mm -hmm. like it's you know, and I, and I say it respectfully, like a kid that you had that, mm -hmm. that excitement that you get from that just never, never goes away. I don't, never lost you don't know what's going to be on that. Hook. No, no, you never know. No. It's not just a bass. Like, and that's why on this show, Fish and DV, yeah. we don't talk just about bass fishing. We've yeah. had a musky guy yeah. on yeah. who was yeah. just, mm -hmm. when he, when he called me up on Facebook saying like this, he was so passionate about mm -hmm. this thing and like trying to show, tell like, Hey, the upper Potomac's got some massive. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, you know, the state record was just mm -hmm. pulled out of there, yeah. whether it's a crappie <laughs> or catfish, like it doesn't yeah. matter. And we're going to get into saltwater mm -hmm. stuff this summer too. Yeah. Cause like, there's so many varieties there yeah. that you can get this addiction filled with and it's no not just a little green fish like mm -hmm. i like them too but mm -hmm. heck if you want to take me tuna fishing i'm okay with that as, right. as well and i can't really that's that's you know you're seven eight years old you know 70 or uh, what would be 62 years ago like you know in that river has the river have you seen the shannon river change a whole lot since then or I, i've seen not so much some different things on it yeah. like i said we used to be able to go down and fish all night mm -hmm. and stay all night Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nobody's giving you any trouble hmm. but now everything is sold which i understand yeah everything there but i'd still love to fish some of them spots that i i used to sit on that down there at the big rock you know white horse rock down mm -hmm. there i used to sit on that rock and catch eels hmm. and you used to eat that those, right long. you said oh, you used yeah. to eat them yeah and we would eat, uh my mom would wait my raw? Huh? No, no, oh, he'd fry yeah, them fry. up. My stepdad fry. would skin them out, and my mom would block them and, and fry them. And those are the days that I remember. Are you sure, though, too? I've heard Basil tell a story of one of those little water bridges where it had a no fishing from the bridge sign on mm -hmm. it. And whenever a car pulled up, they'd have to run down over the bank and hide. Was that you that's did low the same water thing? bridge? That was He's low smiling. water bridge up towards uh, <laughs> past the fairground. But uh, you got to watch Ray, though, too, because I'm telling you, we were down at the chick <laughs> in day two. 
we were talking to him we're like in races I'm, I'm on him you know if we follow your race yeah come on you know <laughs> so we went up in this creek and i swear to god i still got a picture of it you go up in this creek and there's a posted sign right in the middle of the creek and it says no trespassing <laughs> and there goes ray and i'm like ryan i'm like i don't even know if we're allowed to be back in there and i'm like ray that's illegal that's no. what i think the day you caught but the big not, fish as long as you're on the water and you don't get off your boat i said yeah. man he's trespassing as long as the that's cops what my don't dad come, used to legal. say he said the guy may own the land, but God owns the water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You know, he didn't. I, another thing, too, I noticed Ray wasn't around me. I'll tell this quick story. He wasn't around <laughs> me this time because one summer oh. in particular, we were up in the same cove and uh, and it was hot. This on Anna. It was hotter than Blue Blazes. Yeah, this on Anna. On Anna. And uh, I decided, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to. It was, o'clock, it was 12, 30, 90 or 100 degrees. I said, I'm just going to jump in and cool off. You know, so I set my rod down and everything. And said, hey, Ray, as I was jumping in, and he looked over and saw me. And, <laughs> and next thing I know, he's, he's buzzing out of there. So he doesn't stay around very close anymore. So. Hey, he was in his skimmies. <laughs> Brian's on the front of the boat fishing. He jumps off the back. <laughs> so that's all I got to tell him. I'm going skinny dipping down. You know, Ray's gone. I'm gone. I'm out of there. So. Not go stick around. Uh, well, guys, again, we do appreciate thank you. Thank you so all. much coming on. Oh, yeah, thank coming it's on. It's been a pleasure. And wish you luck, thank you know, rest of the season, even though we're competing against you. But uh, I think it's great that you went out and did what you did and yeah. won that first one. And that's good. So, yeah, good luck to you too. You guys hope yeah. you do well. I just hope we do better. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> I agree. Boy, I told Ray before. I said, Ray, you're favored to win this year. And yeah, said, no, yeah. No, no, no. That's what you told me last year well. too. <laughs> You want a better steak dinner on no, this next I one? No, I said five On the chick? No five steak dollars. dinner? <laughs> Cheeseburger. Mm-mm, You'll bet five dollars? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll take that on five dollars back. All right. I'll bet you surf and turf. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fish sticks and a bologna sandwich. There you go. That works too. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, guys. Please leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe to the channel. It helps with the algorithm so we can get more guests on here and grow this thing a little bit bigger. My name is Thomas Aarons of Fish in the DMV. I'm Jared Mounts. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Aarons and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.